Alright, what's going on guys? This is Jake and in this video I'm going to be showing you step by step how you can create your own website using Wix. So jumping right into it here, I would recommend following along step by step as that will be the easiest way to go ahead and do it. So in order to do that, if you click the first link in the description, it will be brought to this page right here and sometimes Wix does go in and update this page so if it looks a little different it's fine but just go ahead and click the first link in the description and let's get started with building the website so once you're at this page right here you just want to go ahead and click on start now and once we go ahead and load up we have to go ahead and put in some information right here so i'm going to go ahead and do that right now so once we go ahead and sign up we just have to go ahead and answer a few questions now so we're going to just click on get started and then right here we can see it says what kind of website are you creating so you want to make sure that you put this in as detailed as possible because what it's going to do is this is going to allow Wix to suggest us uh, some related templates um, here in a second. So you're going to go ahead and just type in the type of website you're creating here. So in this case, I'm just going to be creating an example candy shop here. So I'm going to just go ahead and select this and click next. So right here, it's going to go ahead and suggest a couple things that we can go ahead and add to our website here. So right here, we can see that it went ahead and auto populated a couple things that are recommended for us based on the type of store we went ahead and selected, but we can go ahead and pick whatever we want here. So let's say uh, in this case, I don't want the event, but I want to go ahead and keep the live chat. And let's say I wanted to go ahead and add a restaurant um, menu here. In this case, we could go ahead and do that. Let's say if you were a restaurant and you wanted to go ahead and take food orders, you could go ahead and do that. Or if you were an e-commerce store, you could click online store and then you could go ahead and start selling products like that. So in this case, I'm going to just stick with restaurant menus and live chat and then click next. And what it's going to do here is it's going to ask us if we've created a website before. And I'm going to just go ahead and answer that right here. And now we get to choose between creating our own website with the Wix editor or using the Wix ADI, which kind of creates a website for us. Now, in this case, I would recommend creating your own site as if you get the automated site created for you, it's going to be pretty basic and it's not going to be as unique as if you create it yourself. So we're going to go ahead and create our own website with the Wix editor right here by clicking start now. And then we're going to take a look at some templates right in here. So the cool thing is, is based on what we selected earlier, it's going to go ahead and recommend some themes, some templates for us right here. So we can see in this case, we have a couple of different templates and what you can go ahead and do is you can look through a bunch of these. You can see there's a ton of different pages and if you don't want to go ahead and and if you want to go ahead and browse through all their templates without the specific recommendations, you can go ahead and just X this out and get rid of these. And you can sit here and browse the different categories they have as well. Now, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and just look through a couple on this main page. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up right here. So if you see one that kind of catches your eye, you can kind of just go in and click view. So what this is going to do is you can go ahead and view the template as a whole. So you can go ahead and see what this template will actually look like and see if this is something that you would actually want to go ahead and customize. So we can go ahead and see through here, this looks like a pretty simple design here that would probably be pretty good for a candy store. And if I go back, let's say I wanted to go ahead and check this one out, I could go ahead and view this as well. And you can go ahead and just look through a bunch of these different ones to see which one suits your needs the best. Now, in this case, I'm going to go with this one because it's simple and I think it's going to be the easiest one to help showcase the Wix editor on. So I'm going to go ahead and just click view once again, and then I'm going to just click edit. And what it's going to go ahead and do is set up this template for us right now. So now it's went ahead and loaded in here and we can see that it is actually adding up Wix stores. So this theme actually comes with e-commerce. So once this loads up here, now we're going to go ahead and start getting familiar with the actual Wix editor itself. So Wix pretty much works on an entire uh, drag and drop basis. So pretty much anything you can just click on and edit. So the first thing we're going to do is take a look at some of the basic functionality of the editor here. So first off, we're going to come up here to site and we can go ahead at any time and click preview for our site to go ahead and take a look at what our site actually would look like live. So we can go ahead and click preview right there and this will show us what our site looks like. 
and now I'm going to go ahead and click back to editor. Also up here under site, we can go ahead and click publish. So at any time, once we are finished setting up the site, we can click publish to go ahead and make it live. And then we can also click save to go ahead and save our work. So anytime we make a bunch of customizations every couple of minutes, I would recommend going ahead and coming up here and clicking save or clicking save right here. It does say auto save is on, but sometimes you just wanna be safe and make sure that you save quite frequently. Next thing we're gonna look at here is this mobile viewer. So we can see right now we're looking at desktop view. So this is what the site looks like on a desktop. However, the majority of traffic nowadays comes from mobile. So now we can go ahead and see what our site actually looks like on a mobile phone. So throughout the entire editing process, I would recommend coming over to this section just to make sure that your site still looks good on mobile because if it looks good on desktop but not on mobile, you're going to be losing out on a lot of traffic because the majority of traffic comes from mobile. But when it comes to editing, it's more intuitive to edit it in the desktop editor, but that's just something you want to go ahead and keep in mind. As far as the rest of this menu goes, you don't really need to worry about um, help hire a partner or dev mode, but under settings, there is going to be a lot of different things we can go ahead and edit here. So we can see that we can go ahead and connect a domain or we can upgrade both of these things we're going to be looking at a little bit later in this video. Get found on Google shows us how to set up our SEO, which we're also going to be looking at later in this video. And then right here, we can go ahead and add an icon for our site if we want. So I'm gonna actually go ahead and start off with this. So before we start actually editing the site, we're gonna go ahead and edit some of the basic stuff right here. So if you don't know, the favicon here is the little logo that shows up here in the top left corner of every site. So this is definitely something you wanna set up. So when it comes to designing your site, there's a few things that I would recommend having to begin with. And if I go ahead and bring up a quick list real quick, I recommend having a logo and a color scheme picked out as well as images to use on the site and obviously any company information. And if you are an e-commerce store, then you want to go ahead and make sure you have product info, details, and photos. So this is just some basic information you definitely want to have before starting your website design. So coming up here now, we're going to go ahead and open up Favicon right here. And we're going to go ahead and put in an icon for up here. So once this goes ahead and loads up, I'm going to go ahead and click on upload image right here. And what we can do here is we can see that we can go ahead and start adding site files. So instead of just adding the favicon, I'm going to add a bunch of site files that we're going to put on the site all at once because it's just going to make the process a lot easier. So right now at this point, any photos and images that you want to put anywhere on the site, go ahead and upload them in here right now. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I went ahead and uploaded some photos here and now I'm going to select the one that I want to use for the favicon and I would recommend just using a small version of your logo to go ahead and put up here and I'm going to go ahead and just click choose file and then right here it doesn't completely show right here it's a little cut off but it's not going to be cut off once it's all the way up there. And then I'm just going to go up here and click save. Now at this point, while we're on this page, we can go ahead and edit a few things. So I'm going to just go ahead and scroll up right here and we can see that we can change our site name. So this is going to show up in Google as well. So we can make our site name just uh, whatever your business name is. And then we can come down here and we can see that our site isn't published yet. And then when our site is published, this will be our um, domain right here but we will be getting a custom domain here later on in the video. So once I go ahead and click save on this, now we can go ahead and go back to settings once again, and we're gonna go ahead and edit some of our basic info really quick. So we can go ahead and put in the business info right here. So we can see at this point, we just wanna go ahead and type in our business name, and then we can type in a short description about our business right here. Now, in this case, I'm actually just going to put some dummy text for the sake of this video. And then we can go ahead and select a category which best matches our business right here. So in this case, we're gonna be restaurants and food. And then we could go ahead and select a subcategory if we want. So in this case, I guess a candy shop would probably be closest to a cafe or a bakery. And then right here, we can go ahead and add our logo, which we can go ahead and select from the site files, which we added earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and select the logo image, click choose file. And I'm going to go ahead and come down here. And this is where we can go ahead and add our location info here. 
So that way, if we have a physical location, people know where we are at. So in this case, I can just put in an address here. So I'm just gonna put Chicago, Illinois. And then we can come down here and we can add our contact information as well. So if we have a business email, we can put that here. And if you don't have a business email, I'm gonna be showing you how you can get one later in this video. Then you can put your business phone number here and who really uses faxes anymore, but you can still do that if you want. And then down here, we can customize the business hours. So if you're a local business, you can go ahead and put in your hours here by clicking edits. So let's say you are only open Monday through Friday. We can get rid of Saturday and Sunday. Let's say you are maybe open from, let's say 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. On each one of these days, you can go ahead and do that and click apply. And there we go. You can see your business hours now show up as 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. So that's just some of the basic business info you wanna go ahead and fill out and go ahead and click save. So now once we've done that, we can actually get into editing the actual site here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just close this out right now. And at this point, we're gonna actually start getting into editing. So the first thing I wanna do here is there is this toolbar here on the right and I find myself never really using it. So we can go ahead and X this out. But if you do actually want to use that, you can come back here up to tools and click on it and it will come back but I don't really find it very helpful. You can click on layers here and this will show you all your layers as well, but I don't really use that either. Either The main thing I'm really using here is this left side bar and the actual click editor. So let's go ahead and get familiar with this bar on the left now. So the first thing we can go ahead and click is menu and pages here. And what this goes ahead and shows us is our entire site menu, which is right here. So we could go ahead and change some of these pages if we want. So we can see we click on one of these and it brings up the actual page right here. So we can go ahead and click on the three dots and click settings if we want to edit this page. So let's say we don't want this, if we wanted to just make this page title about, we could go ahead and name it about. We could go ahead and choose to hide it from the menu if we want. So if we don't want it to show up on this main menu here, we can hide it. But in this case, we'll go ahead and keep it on. Now, as far as pages that you would hide from the menu, those would be pages like privacy policies, terms of service, etc. A lot of the big pages that most visitors are going to want to see, you're going to want on your menu right here. Then we can come down here to layouts and we can actually change the layout of specific pages as well. So we can change this to no header and footer. And that would just mean that this page is just blank. But in most cases, you're gonna be keeping the standard layout. And then we have permissions, so we can make certain pages private, but in most cases, we're gonna have all of our pages public. And then we have our SEO settings right here. So we can go ahead and edit the individual SEO settings for each one of these pages. And we can go ahead and use the SEO Wiz, which is something I'm gonna show you how to do later on, which makes things a lot easier. So in this case, we're gonna go ahead and go back here. And let's say we wanna go ahead and change the order of certain pages on this menu. We can click it, we can drag it and drop it. So this would go ahead and take menu and change it to a different area on the menu. And if we go back to home here, we can now see that menu is showing up down here versus if we drag it back up, we can see that it will go ahead and move back over to the left. Now let's say we wanted to add a brand new page to our store we could go ahead and click add page and what this is going to do here is give us a few templates so there's about page templates right here our website template already came with an about page so we wouldn't need to add one but let's say we wanted to add different pages for potentially services we can see they have a lot of templates for this they have contact templates right here and they have landing page templates as well same with blogs bookings and store pages so there's a lot of different templates you can go ahead and use here there and there's some general templates that would work for many pages as well or if you want to just add a brand new page here you could just add a blank page and start from scratch now the good thing about using a wix template is they pretty much give you all the pages that you're going to need anyway so you probably will only need to add one or two pages at most so let's say we want to go ahead and delete a page now what we can go ahead and do is click on these three dots again and just come over here and click delete and then that page is now gone 
So that's how you can go ahead and edit the menu and the navigation. And that's how you can easily navigate between pages here. You'll notice on the Wix editor itself, you can't navigate between pages by clicking this because you're clicking the menu as a whole to edit it. So if you want to navigate between editing pages, you have to come back up here and click on the page you want to edit just like that. So we're going to stick on the home page now. And we can see here that if we come down now to backgrounds, we can go ahead and edit our page background as a whole. So we can see that right now we have a page background color and it's just this flat color right here. So if I were to select color, we can see that we can pretty much change this to any color that we want. So in this particular case, I'm just gonna change it to a solid white. And then we could also make a background image for the entire site if we wanted to as well. So we could click on image and then this would allow us to go ahead and use some of our site files or we could explore media from Wix. So we could go ahead and search for something say like candy from Wix and we can see a bunch of different images that Wix allows us to use and we can search through Unsplash as well. So if you wanna go ahead and use a background image, but in this case, for the entire background, normally you just want a blank color, but a place where we can actually change images is going to be right here. So let's go into actually editing one of these actual strips right now. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do here is click right here on this container box, and I'm going to click change design. And you can see what we can do here is we can pretty much change this to anything we can change this to different themed boxes. We can take a look at all of these different shapes that they have, or we can go ahead and click on customize design here, and we can change it to these different types of shapes. We can change the background opacity here to make it more whited out or make it more full. And you can see there's a lot of different things that we can go ahead and do. And then if we click on this image in the center, we can go ahead and change this specific image. So let's say I wanna change this to our logo. I'm gonna go ahead and click that right there but we can see that right now we can't actually see the logo. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is actually, first off, I'm gonna click this back container box and let's say that I don't actually want this container box to be here. I'm gonna go ahead and right click on the container box and just click delete. But let's say we did that by mistake. What you can actually do is come up here and click undo and it will bring everything right back. So that's one cool thing about editing with Wix. If you make a mistake, you can go ahead and click undo or redo at any time. So in this particular case, the container doesn't really work very well with our image. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do instead is I'm gonna go ahead and just delete it and I'm gonna keep it deleted. And then I'm gonna come over here to the left and I'm going to click on add. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do is add an image right here. So if I select add image, you can see there's a bunch of different things that we can go ahead and add to our site. But in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and add an image and I'm gonna go ahead and select my image uploads. And I'm gonna go ahead and click our logo right here and I'm gonna click add the page. And then I'm gonna go ahead and drag this logo up top and attach it to the header right here. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is actually I'm gonna quickly drag it out of the way just so we can get rid of this text as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click this and delete this text. And we can see that's how we can get rid of that. And then I can go ahead and center my logo right here by looking for this line. And we can see that now our logo is up here in the center. All right, so now that we put our logo in, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is change our color scheme on the site to match our brand in here. So we can see that the site brand in here is kind of blue and brown and I want it to match our brand in here. So if we come over here to the left and click theme manager, we can see that we have the color theme right here and we can see we can edit our themes colors. So we have color one, color two. So what I wanna go ahead and do here is actually change the colors of all of these blue outlines on the menu. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on color two and I'm gonna input the hex code right here and you can get the hex code by Googling hex color finder on Google and uploading your logo. And I'm gonna go ahead and paste this in right here click add and now we can see that our color scheme has now been added right here and everything looks a bit better. Now let's say I wanna go ahead and change this one as well. What I can go ahead and do is edit this color once again and I'm gonna put in the same color right here and we can see that changed this color right here and I'm gonna click add but we can see that this also changed our background as well because this went with a whole color template. So what we can go ahead and do to change our background back to white is by click on this shade all the way to the left. I'm gonna go ahead and just make it white. And we can see now our background is white once again, and I'm gonna click 
apply. So now we can see here that our colors are kind of looking a lot better with our branding. So I'm going to go ahead and get out of this menu now. And now we're going to go ahead and actually start editing different strips. So just to get an idea of what strips are. So on every single page, Wix templates have different strips. And if we click on this right here, first I'm going to save. And if we click on this right here, zoom out and reorder, we can see the different strips from a zoomed out perspective. So we can see we have this strip on top, which is the header with the menu. We can see we have this strip right here. We can see we have this strip of the images of cupcakes. And we can see we have this strip right here with the social media icon. And pretty much all of Wix is based around these strips. And you can see that strips contain different things. So this one contains one image, this one contains a row of images, and this one contains three different blocks. So we can go ahead and change the order of these as we please. We can click up and move this up to the top if we want, or we can move it back down to the bottom. If we wanted to get rid of a strip entirely, we could go ahead and click delete section. If we wanted to go ahead and make a strip bigger or smaller, we could come to these, this little blue horizontal line right here and drag it up or drag it down, and that will adjust the actual size of the strips. So it's very intuitive. So this is how you can actually edit the strips right here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click on exit mode here and get back to the editor. So now that we have a better idea what strips are, we're gonna actually start editing them. So in order to edit anything, you just have to click on it. So I'm gonna click on this image right here, click manage media, and I'm gonna go ahead and change this to a different image. So I'm gonna go ahead and click add media. I'm gonna click add image and we can come over here to our site files that we uploaded earlier. So if you have photos that you wanna use for the site, you can use those, or you can come over here, like I said earlier, and search for different photos related to your business. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and just use the site files that I already have, and I'm gonna click add to page. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of these pre-existing ones first. So I'm gonna click remove from gallery, remove from gallery, and remove from gallery just so our picture shows up on the home page here and i'm going to click done and we can see that now this is showing up now let's say we wanted to edit this a little bit more so i'm going to click manage media again click add media again and i'm going to what i'm going to do is i'm going to add the same image but i'm also going to click on crop and edit before we actually add it in so let's say i wanted to go ahead and add a background i could click on background right here and you can see that right here that this is pretty bright but if i click on adding a black background we can make the image a bit darker and easier on the eyes and then we can make it darker and lighter by dragging this right here so let's say i want to make it a bit darker so i'm going to go ahead and add this black background to the image click save and there's other things that we can add on here as well so if i go back to crop and edit once more there's other things we can add on here as well let's say we wanted to go ahead and add text on here we could go ahead and do that so we can come over here and click add text here and first off i'm going to make this box a lot bigger so we have more room to go ahead and type so we could put in welcome to our candy store and we can see that right now we can't really see this text on here so we would come over here to text color we can change it to white now we can see it better and we could go ahead and change the size if we wanted to as well to let's say 144 and then we can drag this to the center right here and we can see to make this a little bit more visible we could come back to the background once again and make the background a bit darker and then we can go ahead and click save and then we can go ahead and add this updated image to our page and we can get rid of this old one use this new one click done and now we can see we have this new image right here so that's how you can go ahead and edit um, specific sections and it's pretty much the same thing for the rest of them so let's say we wanted to change these images here we could go ahead and click on this manage media and it's pretty much the same thing so i'm going to go ahead and remove these from the gallery and go ahead and add my own images in right now. So I went ahead and added four images from our site media here onto this gallery. So if we click done, we can see that now we have our own photos in here and everything looks pretty good. So that's how you can go ahead and edit sections. So when it comes to editing other sections, so let's say if we came back over to menus and went to about, it's literally the same exact process for any page. So you just click on any element, you can click on change image, you can click on this, you can click on edit text. And as far as editing text goes, we can change the theme to a heading one, we can make it a heading two, 
and we can change the font right here as well so we can go through fonts and we can click on different fonts to see which font we actually like and we can go ahead and change the font size as well so if we want this to be bigger we can come in here and change the font color and we can see that we can select our theme colors as well so that's why it's important to change our theme colors to our branding we can come down here and make our font bold italicize or underlined if we want to go ahead and do that and we can go ahead and add links as well so pretty much editing everything is going to be the same process in Wix, which is why it's actually really easy to learn. So once you learn how to edit stuff initially, editing everything else is going to essentially be exactly the same. So at this point, if we come back here to menus and home, we can see here that now I want to go ahead and show you how you can actually add more sections if you want to. So if we click on add here, we can go ahead and add an entire strip so we can see that there's different types of templates for strips as well. So we have about strips, contact strips, welcome strips, services, team, testimonials. And let's say we just wanted to add a classic one here. So we can go ahead and click on a classic strip and we can literally just add a blank one in right here. So once we have a new strip, we can go ahead and add things to the strip by clicking add and then we could go ahead and add different things so let's say we wanted to add text to this strip we could add a heading in here and we can literally drag it anywhere we want now one thing you may have noticed is you'll see these black dotted lines coming down the left and the right side now whenever you're setting up your site it is recommended that you try and keep as much of the important content in between these lines as possible because while you may be able to see it on your screen not everyone's screen is going to be this wide so this is just the recommended safe area to keep all of your important stuff in between so whenever you're creating a new strip that isn't a part of the theme and it's not already formatted just keep that in mind so let's say we put up a heading here and we wanted to go ahead and add something else we could go ahead and add literally anything we want we let's say now we wanted to go ahead and add a button we could go ahead and do that as well we could add a button in right here and you can see that you can pretty much add anything you want so you could go in here and you could even add a contact form we could put this contact form in here instead let's say we wanted to get rid of these and we just wanted to go ahead and make this area a contact form we could go ahead and do that by placing this right in this strip right here and we can go ahead and stretch this strip out to fit the contact form just by dragging this a little bit like this. And we can see that now the form properly fits. So at this point, this is how you can pretty much create new strips. And let's say I wanted to go ahead and zoom out and reorder this. Let's say I wanted this to move up a little bit more. I could go ahead and move that up to there. Or let's say I wanted to keep it right here. I could go ahead and click save and go ahead and exit. So at this point, that's pretty much how you can go ahead and use the Wix editor. It's very intuitive and editing everything is pretty much the same the same thing. So it essentially comes down to the look that you're going for and the level of creativity that you have. So the best thing about Wix is that if you're using a template, you can pretty much just fill it in like we've done here. However, if you want to have a bunch of other stuff, you can go ahead and add to it like we've just done right in here. So now I'm going to go, go ahead and show you how you can add some extra things to your store. So if we come over here to add apps. We can see this is going to open up the Wix app market. So you can see there's a bunch of different apps that you can go ahead and use. And these are just other types of third party um, software that you can add to your store that kind of give you extra features and everything like that. So we can go ahead and see what's popular for this month, for example. You can see you could add a background music app, abandoned cart recovery for emails. Uh, you can see uh, product reviews, etc. So there's a lot of different apps you can go ahead and look through. And I would recommend just picking out ones that you think would add value to your store. Now, you definitely don't need to add a bunch of apps if you don't feel like they're going to do anything. So you can go ahead and look through here. Maybe you want like an email marketing app and we could go ahead and see what emails marketing apps they have. So they have like MailChimp, they have uh Privy, so this is email pop-ups. They have Clavio, so there's a bunch of different email apps you can go ahead and use. So let's say maybe you wanted upsells if you were in e-commerce, you could go ahead and look for a app on that. So there's a lot of different ways that you can boost the functionality of your store by using apps. So that's how you go ahead and do that. Next thing I want to do is open up settings and then click 
on get found on Google right here. And this is going to help us set up our SEO. So we can see here, once this loads up, we can see that we can go ahead and just click start now. And we can go ahead and just make sure we put in our business name right here, click on next, and then we can go ahead and choose whether we have a physical location or not. So if we do have a physical address, we can go ahead and just click yes. And in this case, I'm just gonna pick Chicago, click next. And then we can see right here, how would we describe our business? We sell candy. And we can go ahead and then just click create SEO plan. And what this is gonna go ahead and do is automatically create a template for us to go ahead and follow when it comes to optimizing our SEO. So we can see that it gives us a bunch of different tasks right here to go ahead and do. So like set the homepage title, add a homepage description, update text on homepage, connect Google search console. You can see there's a bunch of different things that we can go ahead and set up. And I would recommend going through here and following the SEO whiz and setting all of this stuff up because this is going to help you get more traffic for free from Google search. So at this point now, we're gonna go back to the main menu and I'm gonna click on dashboard now. So we've spent a lot of time in the editor. So now we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the dashboard here. So the dashboard is just gonna give you a lot of overall info about your site right here so the last thing that i want to go ahead and show you in this video is how you can actually upgrade your site to go ahead and get a custom domain and everything like that so i'm going to go ahead and click upgrade down here and it's going to bring us to this page right here so depending on the type of site you have that's going to determine the type of plan you need so if you just have like a basic website just for a business you're not going to sell any products on your site or anything like that you're just looking for a bit of an online presence i would recommend just a basic website plan right here so we can see right here for personal use or just for entrepreneurs and freelancers and you can go ahead and read through what all these different plans do but like i said if you're not really selling anything on your site and you're just looking for like a little bit of a brand presence maybe you're just a local business then you can go ahead and just click one of these cheaper website plans right here now let's say you do have an e-commerce store and you were trying to go ahead and actually sell products through your site then you're definitely going to need an e-commerce plan which allows you to accept payments and sell products on your site right here so in this particular case you can go ahead and just select one of these plans right here so you can go ahead and read through these and pick which one is best suited for your site. Now, in this case, for the sake of this example, I'm going to just pick the cheapest one because this is not an actual site that I'm going to use. It's just for the sake of the demo. So if I go ahead and click this right here, you can see that it's going to tell you how often you want to be billed. So if you're a pre-existing business and this is a site that you're going to be using for a long time, I would recommend getting the billing for at least yearly because it's going to be a lot cheaper than if you get it monthly. So if this is a site for like a high school project or something, then you obviously don't really need to upgrade at all. But if this is a site for an actual business, then I would recommend actually getting the site set up for the next couple of years. So I would recommend using the yearly option. But in this case, for the sake of the video, I'm gonna use the monthly because obviously this isn't a real site and it's just a demo site, so I wanna spend the least amount of money as possible, and then you just click continue to check out. So once you go ahead and select and pay for your plan here, now you can go ahead and pick a domain for your site. So in this particular case, we can just go ahead and type in and see if we have a domain name available. So you can go ahead and just put in your brand name here and click search, and we can go ahead and click on get it. And what we can go ahead and do here is we can see that we can go ahead and buy this for one year, two years, etc. And I would recommend definitely getting a professional domain name because as we saw earlier, the last default domain name we went ahead and got was a big long strand of essentially BS that no one can be able to remember. So if you're going to actually have a professional website and this is for an actual business, you're definitely gonna need a professional domain name here. And you can see it's pretty affordable at just around $15 per year. And if you want it for longer, you can go ahead and save money by getting the two or three year. But once again, since this is just a instructional tutorial, I'm gonna be going through this in the cheapest possible way. Click continue again, and then we can go ahead and make our registration private if you want. Now I would recommend that you go ahead and make your registration private because this is gonna help prevent spam and junk mail and it's going to keep your personal address and everything associated with the domain private. So once you go ahead and do that, you can just click continue. So after you buy a domain here, you can go ahead and get a personalized mailbox if you want. So this is going to provide you with a professional 
um, business email address. So this is going to be a lot more professional than something like jake at gmail.com because now it's going to be your email at your domain.com. So if you are once again a business, I would recommend you do this, but I'm not going to go ahead and do this for this video because I've already spent like $40 on this video for a website I'm never really going to use after this video. So at this point, I'm going to just click on go to domains. And now the last thing I want to go ahead and do is just publish the site here. So if we go back to the site editor now, we can see that we're going to wait for this to load up and then we are going to go ahead and make this site live. Now, obviously this site could use some more editing, but in this case, I'm just going to show you how you can go ahead and publish your site once you're finished. So you would just come up here to the top right and click publish so you can go live with the site and then anyone can see it. And we can see congratulations your site is published and live online we click on view site you're going to see that it's going to take a couple of minutes for it to actually load especially since we just bought the new domain so you can go ahead and continue to work on the site after this and come back and check the site later on and everything will be live and good to go so with that said that's how you can go ahead and create a website using wix so if you did enjoy this video and found it helpful be sure to leave it a thumbs up Subscribe to this channel for more videos, and I will see you guys in another one.